I would imagine the Tarantino shoot was very much like an old school shoot because he's still <laughs> shooting on film, right? Yeah, we, we shot on film, which is unheard of. Amazing, amazing. And his approach with one camera, uh, no monitor. Nobody sees what they're doing. Nobody comes over to the monitor to check. You, you have, you have Bob Richardson, which is, is uh, Quentin's DP, and you have Quentin. Those two look through the lens, and, and they're the ones that will make the decision if it works or it doesn't work. Wow. And that's it. And, and you know what? It removes all the preciousness away from, you know, I, I have, I, one thing that I'm doing is I'm, I'm handing over my faith to you, and I'm handing over my will to you. And I'm not going to walk over and second guess you with my, I didn't like that one. Let's do it again. You'll let me know if it was good or it wasn't because yeah, there, there'd be, there'd be few directors. You could, you could have an easier time. I think putting your faith in as an actor. I mean, he, he really is a, a actor's director. Yeah. Um, and just his, his, his uh, films are so, uh, performance driven um, yeah. to, to this, to the point that some stuff just gets washed away where there's there, the, even though he does do these big sets, there's other times where there's not a lot going on. It's just about the two people uh, in the room and that's it. You know, uh, yeah. it, it, starting with his first movie. So that had to be just a, a bucket list uh, event for you. How long were you uh, involved with that shoot? Uh, I was, I was there. Uh, I was there three Three weeks, oh, and, wow. and um and he literally we had known or we had met for Django. I had uh, read for him, auditioned for for Django Unchained, uh and but really he knew me from his study of the Tony Scott movies. Yeah, and, and then I'm in the lobby and it's a very covert, secretive meeting, and he hops out. And he goes, Yeah, Lou Tempo. Tony Scott, you're the fucking hero in Tony Scott movies, you know? And I'm like, oh, well, thank you. Unstoppable, I was just watching it the other day, thank you. And knew as much about my career as I did and, and, and referenced all the, you know, the highlights and, and here were big transition points and movies that I had done and some subtle stuff that probably people didn't notice, but he did and it was great. And then he just invited me to be part of this. Now, that being said, I don't know if you've looked at that cast list. Yes. Uh, it is uh, the all-star team. And so I, I didn't do a lot in this movie, but just to be invited is quite an honor. And just to be in the team picture of the all-star team, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's sort of like a Florida Marlin being invited to the all-star game. You know, you don't really get to play, but you're there. Thank you. But, well, and your, your name yeah. on IMDb, is is it land pirate lou it is so it is. did he write did, was this character written with you in mind or did they just adopt your name or what no he wrote it specific he had an idea oh man he had an idea so that's got to be so cool it was really great and he's infectious as well and enthusiastic but interesting there was a point in time when he was adjusting camera and he was focusing on me and he goes, okay, Lou, here's your Tony Scott shot. And so here we go again. And I'm like, oh, wow, you're really, either everyone connects Tony to me or everyone connects themselves to wanting to be as good as Tony. And I think the latter is the truth. And I think that's, I think that's an honor. And I think we never, look, Tony was like Willy Wonka. Tony was like your, 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 your craziest, most fun uncle that you loved when he showed up with that muscle car and some pistols. And you were going to get to do things you'd never done before, and you'd do anything for him. And that's how Tony's sets worked, and that's how Tony's movies worked, and that's how Tony's legacy works. And everybody that I've worked with, like Gore, or, or Quentin has a little bit of that bravado in them and their, their entire team, their crew, their, their cast, they all want to deliver for, for, for them. And Tony was at the top of that. So 
I recognize that in Quentin as well. He's what I would call a method director. He becomes his movie. He's in the movie. And it, he, is, he is doing the role with you while you're doing the role. He knows it. He's written it. And, and it, it, the whole tone of it is, is coming through him and channeling into you. And so he's very engaged. And he has a story for every minute of the day. There's, there's not one point in the day that he is not exhortating a story to cast and crew, which is an absolute delight. It's an absolute delight. So um, a real gift to be exposed to that, I have to say. Well, and uh, just for people listening, the movie is uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Correct. And yeah. I, I, it seems like it's maybe slated for Christmas this year. I believe it's going to come out in August. Oh, wow. Okay, so a little yeah. earlier than I thought. But, yeah, they, yeah. they just started releasing, I think Vanity Fair uh, just released some more images. Yeah. Uh, that More more than I've seen. But uh, it looks it, – I mean, it's – It's it's great. It, it, it's, yeah. you know, it's 1969. It's, uh, it, it's, it's built around the vehicle of the, the Sharon Tate murders. Uh, the Manson family, and um, and that's all I can really say about it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, uh, and it's one of those movies where, like, yeah, I'll be excited to see a trailer, but I don't need to see that to sell. Like, I'm gonna go see it. I yeah. don't, you know, I don't need to be convinced. It's Quentin to go Tarantino. See it. and let's not forget. I mean, the word on the street is it could be his last movie. He he f has flirted with that. Yeah, um, for sure. Oh, yeah. He's, he's talked about maybe trying to dabble with TV or like yeah. a mini series or something. I totally see him doing television. I totally see him uh, because I think um, I think he can. He really, I I understood watching him. He really likes to build in the moment. I think television is perfect for that. You know, a film is like a clock. There's no stopping. Once you set it, once you set it, it just keeps going, and until it stops, you get you know for him 100 days, and what you get at the end of 100 days is what you get. Uh, but television, you can stop it, redirect, set it forward, maybe not tell the whole story in this episode, tease a little bit. We'll go back and hit that point two episodes down the road. I just think the the design is going to tickle his fancy currently. We'll see. There's nothing like a movie, but but yeah, I would agree. But I would also say uh, what we were just talking about, where um, the I guess the the process of filmmaking is not what it once was. I think because of the advances in technology, they have are probably somewhat responsible for uh, the filmmaking to be like faster. Yeah. But it's also I think partly responsible for TV being as good as it is right now. Yeah. Because TV is, you know, so it's almost like balancing out where movies are kind of getting closer to what TV is, and TVs are coming up to the level of, of uh, you know, no, real filmmaking. No question. Yeah, I think that, uh, that, you know, TV advances based on technology. I think the idea that um, there's a certain level of subtlety, also the idea that we have continual story moving through um, as opposed to just self con self contained episodic television. Remember, we used to just watch television. Here's an episode, and it stood alone. Then next week, there was another. You know, there the connectivity that we're able to keep that storyline running all the way through is uh, is is interesting. I I think it it's a it's a lifeline that we're attached to, and the idea that you can binge watch something. Uh, to use that buzz term, um, and and feel like you're getting the most of it. I always felt like tuning into a show once a week felt disconnected. But today, you can watch it at your leisure or at your flurry. It doesn't. There's nothing. There's not to me. There's nothing leisurely about binge watching. Look, we got five hours. We got to get this. <laughs> We got to get this season in. All Quick right. Bathroom breaks, you know, yeah. popcorn, no, let's whatever go. you're doing in between, but you, you got to move. It's if you like this clip, definitely click the subscribe button and be sure to check out full podcast episodes. If you love movie conversations, I think you'll really dig the entire podcast. You can also check out some of these older clips as well as my main channel, my more popular channel, where I list out all of the best movies currently available on Netflix and other streaming services.